All right, good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Thursday, February 16th, 2023 planning board meeting. Could we all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Introduction to board members. To my far left, we have Paul Amatucci and Jerry Graybill. We have myself, Michael LaRue. We have Phil Roy, Don Ganarelli, and then on Zoom, we have Matt Henry. Uh, we also have Irish Griffith, the Code Enforcement Officer, Dave Andreessen of Code and Planning Technician, and Lee J. Feldman from SMPDC. All right. Um, first is the first public comment. Um, Open any town resident that has something to say other than what's on the agenda. Just state your name and your address. Mm -hmm. Hello, my name is Pat Bobert. I live at Six Country Lane. Um, I am here tonight um, with um, my husband and I are um, concerned that we had noticed an omission in the land use ordinance for performance standards for gas stations. And uh, we believe that it, they should be in there. And um, there are uh, performance standards for many other things, um, including hotels, uh, which um, have some interesting uh, performance standards. But we're concerned that, um, that there are none in the land use ordinance. And would like to see them written up and put in. Um, we drew up just a handy dandy little suggestion for some performance standards, which I know you guys are, um, you know, the ones that will um, say the final things about them. But we thought, considering um, if you look at um, 8.3a for the hotels and motels that that would give some guidance um, we're also thinking about buffering um, lot setbacks and lot coverages and um, from the lot line to the existing residence or business i have i'll, I'll give you a list Thank you. I, I just have one um, and traffic, of course, um, the approaches to speed and the kind of traffic going through intersections. Um, location restrictions, water quality, and whether you would want outside storage or automobiles. But there are just lots of things to think of about gas stations, especially gas stations of different sizes. And um, I think, um, I know, um, I never really thought about more gas stations in town, but um, um, now uh, I believe they can only be out um, on Route 4 and maybe some other place in this. Yeah, I, I'm not sure, but I, we, that's what we would recommend, that it would be in the commercial industrial, no more you know, downtown and the, the rural commercial industrial areas. Um, and of course, anything that you would like to add, because I know you're pretty thorough as far as that concerns. Um, so I'll just. Awesome. Sorry, I'm coming. Oh, it's okay. Thank you. Uh, let's see. So um, I think the big thing with performance standards is they have like a dual role. One is to protect the town from um, certain types of things and making the most out of everything. Um, and the other thing is to make whatever comes into town be the best that it can be and fit into the town the best it can. And so I think those are all are special things that need to be considered when drawing up performance standards. So um, I noticed that tonight you're having a public hearing for changes to the land use ordinance. And I realized that this would be a change to the land use ordinance. Um, but I was 
hoping that if the planning board was as concerned as we are about this and how important this omission is, that we were hoping that somehow, um, I don't know how the timelines or whatever work exactly, but if the performance standards could be written uh, and a public hearing held, obviously we can't go to this public hearing um, that's tonight, but we're hoping that it would that this could happen in time for the upcoming vote. Now I, um, it's whatever. Not gonna, it's not going to happen. Uh, we're this is like for the it'll be on the next one. We're trying so hard just to get this one in for this one because it still has to go to the select board. But we we will be more than glad to look at it and have it ready for for by the end of the year, November. Uh huh. Okay. Well, that's what we're. Of course, we were hoping that it would be in time for this time, and I don't know yeah. what you would have to do for that, yeah, some that, kind of special meetings or something. Yeah, but we, it would be like uh, January, February is when we need input from you, and then we can work on it. After January, February, it gets too far along, so by the time we give notice and have the public hearings in, the select board has to have it, mm -hmm. they have to give notice, and they have to vote on it. By then, like it's it's basically by February, March, everything has to be in mm -hmm. for the June. We have until um, what, August for the November one. The sure. November one won't will not be a town election. There will not be anything on there. Okay. I talked to the town clerk about that. Okay. If if there if that's the case, the town will expend a lot of money uh, in printing ballots. For oh, this, okay. okay, and that's that's the reason why. So it might be in the next spring. Okay. All right. So I, I just didn't know um, yep. if there was any way that you could hold a special meeting or something that if you felt as strongly as we do about this, um, I know that it doesn't necessarily fit <clears throat> fit the bill, but um, I didn't know if that was a possibility. But whether it's a possibility for now. Um, or just as soon as possible. I think um, it was a surprise um, to notice that there wasn't anything, no performance standards for gas stations. And I'm wondering that um, if there are some other things that are lurking in there that maybe we should find too, <laughs> that need to have some some performance standards written. So that's, do you have any questions for me or no? Thank you. Ms. Gordon? Okay. Hi. Hey. I've got some handouts. Well, can you just state your name for the record? I am Jeremy Caston. I live at 310 Blackberry Hill Road. Nobody's going to get left out. <laughs> Thanks, Jeremy. Absolutely. Thank you. Go. Certainly. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you folks. Um, as you may know, I am the chair, the current chair of Envision Berwick, but I am not here as a representative of Envision Berwick yet. Uh, I am here before the planning board for the first time, uh, essentially uh, for the same reason that, that uh, my neighbor Pat is here. And uh, I'm going to be very forthright just before I lay out for you what I've, what I've put in front of you, and I'll try and make this brief and just, just breeze through this a little bit. But I wanted to make sure that you had some information that obviously, you know, it's a stack, but you can read through it at your leisure, and some of it's pretty wonky, but it's good to have. Um, it came to my attention that there was a possibility of a, a, a plot of land on Route 4 becoming a, a, a gas station. And, um, and obviously, uh, that interested me. I asked around. There, you know, Nothing's happened, but as I understand it, there may be something happening. And then I was here at the uh, select board meeting, and then that was essentially confirmed you know, on the record that that was... In process, so time seems to be of the essence. I understand what you just how you responded to Pat, but I am very concerned about it, and I just wanted to kind of touch on why, as a citizen of the town, um, 
you know what our land use ordinance says. It's that the purpose of the ordinance is to promote the health, safety, general welfare of the residents, and to encourage the most appropriate use of land throughout the municipality, et cetera, et cetera. Um, numerous studies have shown the dangers of having a gas station in close proximity to homes and a gas station at the location that I'm uh, understanding we're talking about would pose not just a nuisance, but a health hazard to, to nearby residents. My concern essentially is that, that this area that is both you know rural, residential, and commercial industrial, it, th th there are certainly parts of town that are just commercial industrial. I think it's good to use them for what they're, they're meant to be used for, and I'm concerned about the citizens. Proven harmful effects of living close to a gas station include, but are not limited to, the following. Increased risk of childhood leukemia, elevated air pollution, increased benzene emissions leading to cancer, anemia, susceptibility to infections, low birth rate, weight, etc. Um, the first handout is from the CDC. It uh, touches on benzene, which is arguably uh, the gasoline constituent most harmful to human health. According to the World Health Organization guidelines for indoor air quality, there is no safe level for benzene. The next piece I've handed you is this um, Springer study. Um, lays out that the hydrocarbon released during fuel storage and transfer at gas stations uh, has detrimental environmental and health effects. Um, the next piece, the Science Direct article, uh, lays out some research, very important research, uh, from Brazil, Brazilian researchers found that air quality was significantly degraded up to 150 meters, that's 492 feet, from gas stations. Um, and the last uh, fuel-related piece is from the um, esteemed John Hopkins Institute, Johns Hopkins Institute for my hometown, um, which lays out that even small spills at gas stations cause significant public health risks over time. Um, notably, the 2015 study researched the effects of hydrocarbons released during the storage and fueling of gasoline, and the study reports that although the portions of unburned fuel released into the environment is small, the cumulative effect are absolutely a health concern for people who live close by. So um, particularly affected are those residents who spend significant amounts of time at home as compared to leave those who leave their home for work because of the longer time of the exposure. So our elderly population and our kids. It's concerning. <clears throat> Community environmental and environmental defense services recommends at least 500 feet distance from the nearest home for any fueling station. Updating the land use ordinance to include protections for residential areas would conform to these recommendations and ensure the protection of residents of Berwick from the health and safety hazards related to close proximity to gas stations and storage tanks. These reasons prove the proposed location, that, as I understand it, proposed location, to be far more than a mere nuisance, but a serious health hazard to our community, especially, as I said, the vulnerable, pop vulnerable population of older folks and children. Further, this location of the gas station would cause traffic hazards, as the existing roads do not provide for a smooth flow of traffic, as we all know as it is. With the addition of tankers and other vehicles entering the station, I fear this is really a big problem that we're potentially walking into. Um, let's protect all parts of the RCI. These residents have a right to a wholesome home environment as protected by you folks. And I look to you, the planning board, to promote the health, safety, and general welfare of the residents of our town. Let's do what we can to expeditiously ensure this. Again, I understand that, that we have come against the wheels of bureaucracy with this timeline. But the truth is that I didn't find out about this in theory until a week ago by chance. Could was confirmed on the record on Tuesday, here we are on Thursday, being told that's it. So, you know, the response from town hall to me has been, well, if you knew about it in November, well, obviously, if I knew about it in November, I would have been here in November. I'm here the moment I found out, and I've done an ama a, 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 as much, I'm, I'm learning on the fly, but I am extremely concerned, and I look to all of you and your wisdom to, to help us find a way to, to protect Berwick, because I think it's critical. The last two pieces in here that I included are, you know, maybe less 
um, science wonky, but also no less important. One is from Housley, which is a, a real estate website that runs down the 10 industries that diminish property value the most. Number two is convenience stores with gasoline stations. And the other article is from a website that's actually a website for people who run convenience stores. And this article brags that convenience stores are the fourth most common location for violent crime, according to, to our government. So I don't know if that means that it went down and they were excited about that, or but it seems like there's a lot of reasons to be concerned. And again, in an effort to be perfectly transparent, you know, I, I look to Paul and, and Pat uh, Bovere as, as folks who um, have helped guide my arrival in Berwick and, and attempt to, to um, do what's right. And, and Paul's reaction was shocked that, that this omission is concerning and maybe was an omission because the idea of, of a gas station right there next to a beautiful farm and a golf course was inconceivable, but it is no longer inconceivable. And so again, I ask you to please, anything we can do to try and make sure that we aren't waiting a year to address this, because I think we all know that we could have uh, a lot of ugly things happen in Berwick in, in a very short period of time. A year is, is too long before the public has an opportunity to say how they feel about this. Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, seeing no one else move forward, I'll close the first public yes. comment. Um, next is public hearing revision of land use ordinance and subdivision regulations. <clears throat> so Christie's here tonight. She's going to uh, she's going to be here on the next uh, part of the agenda in old business. Um, but this is what we've been working on for probably six months. And uh, you guys had a copy of it. And I think we've digested it well enough. And Christy's here. Um, she, she can talk um, after the public hearing, but just wanted to throw that out there. Okay, no one's uh, stepping up. So, I'll, all right, now I'll close the public hearing. Um, next is the approval of minutes for February 2nd, 2023. Thank you. I make a motion that we approve the minutes as written. I will second. All right, further discussion? Uh, we're going to do a roll call vote because Matt is on Zoom. So I'll start with Paul. Yes. Jerry? Yes. I'm a yes. Yes. So? Yes. John and Matt, you're going to abstain, right? Because you weren't here last... You weren't here last. Uh, I wasn't here. Okay. All right. So Matt's abstaining. So two, four, five, five, yes. All right. Moving right along. Old business, School Street Solar, Map R49, Lot 3, Atar Engineering, extension of approval date. That's you. You want to state your name? You got it. All right. Thank you, everyone. For the record, Mike Sudak, Atar Engineering, here on behalf of School Street Solar LLC in New Hampshire Solar Garden. Um, and I know, would you like me to speak first? I know you said that uh, both you and Lee J would like to. Would like to... Go ahead. Okay. So, yeah, um, this was approved in April of 2022. Um, and all I'm here before you tonight is to request a 12 month extension to that approval. I believe your ordinance requires that construction start within 12 months. And we would love to. However, um, there's been some delays with the CMP cluster studies to support their overall analysis of whether or not the transmission lines can handle these types of facilities or whether or not upgrades need to be made, et cetera, et cetera. So that's why the request is before you tonight. And I'd be happy to answer any questions, go over the plans again. But that's, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Lee J, do you want to add anything to that? Um, and, and David and I had a conversation about this um, when the request came in is simply that this 
project is not being held up by anything that the developer is doing. Um, they're being held up by another um, regulatory agency outside of their control. So it really, there's no issues with you um, authorizing an extension of that type. It doesn't require a public hearing or anything like that. It's just a matter of you acknowledging that they're being held up by another agency outside of their control and um, allowing them to have the additional 12 months as part of the process. Okay. Yep. Thank you, Lee J. I appreciate you providing that. There's no changes happening. So it's all exactly the same. It's just an extension. Correct. Is, is there any ETA on this on when this is gonna happen? I'd be happy to confer with my client on that and provide it to the town at, at this point in time. I, I mean, if I could ring CMP's neck, I would, I would love to, but <laughs> yeah. Um, You'll I, have I, to stand in line, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, I'm sure it's, yeah. Um, no, no, no other changes. You know, I, I reviewed the conditions of approval just in preparation for tonight and no, there's no, no, sir. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion. Quick comment, if uh, yep. I may. Uh, just wanted to, to make note. I know previously um, when we had discussed solar projects within the town, we, we were constrained by infrastructure. That being CMP did not have the throughput to put out any more solar. So it, at the time, it was a self-resolving issue that would have us limited on solar projects. Um, I live on Route 236, and CMP is investing heavily on upgrading utility lines, which I don't know how that affects throughput or output for solar, but you know, so long as this isn't going to change the scope of your application as far as output or footprint, um, obviously an approval, but I think we need to do our homework and look at, do we want to limit solar in the town of Berwick for the long term or come up with conditions on future applicants <coughs> as far as disposal, decommissioning, um, so it doesn't adversely affect our town in the long term. And I just want to make sure that's on the record, and I want to make that uh, for the record. Okay. Okay. Uh, Lee J, this application was approved, or uh, I have the findings of fact, the, uh, uh, the conditions of use, the findings of fact were approved on April 7th of 2022. So what would be the new date? Would this be April 7th, 2024? Um, excuse me. It would, yes, because that was, that would be the date that the, uh, one year approval process would, would, um, stop. So okay. I would date it to the April, April date. Okay. So there you go. You have April 7th of 2024. Very good. Okay. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the extension. Second. Okay. Further discussion. Roll call, Paul? Yes. Jerry? Yes. I'm a yes. Phil? Yes. Don? Yes. And Matt? Yeah. Yes. Oh, all right. Thank you, everyone. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I, I do, just as, a, <clears throat> as an aside, a follow-up to Mr. Roy's uh, comments, um, maybe just providing a little bit of information on my experience with it. So, as I understand it, the upgrade to the transmission lines themselves would not, not all three phase powers created equally. So it would just allow um, more sites to be um, available for prospective solar developments. Um, the amount of them is more a substation um, concern as opposed to a transmission line concern, just providing information there. But okay. yeah, it was um, pretty heavily discussed when this project was approved, just the, you know, the, um, the, desire to more closely examine it within your own ordinance. So I would, yeah, mm -hmm. fully encourage mm -hmm. both you guys mm -hmm. and the Berwick residents to, to do that. Mm -hmm. So thank you all. Thank you, Thank sir. you. Thanks, Mike. All right, moving right along. Revision to land use ordinance and subdivision regulations. Okay. Basically, we've gone over this multiple times. I think that we're all comfortable with the language that's in this new ordinance. And um, tonight we had the public hearing on it. Nobody was present. So tonight you need to vote on this. And if it's approved, it's going to move to the selectmen. They're going to vote on it as well. And then the townspeople will vote on it in June. 
So I'll turn it over to Christy if you have any questions. Christy, was the the omission of uh, gas stations in the land use ordinance, it, 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 is that addressed in other towns' land use ordinances? And if so, why why did we not take that opportunity to put it in ours? So I, I, I was going to, when I'm done with this meeting, I was going to go look at a couple of land use ordinances to see if there were... Um, restrictions in the tables saying where gas stations are allowed and not allowed. That was what I was thinking, but I, I haven't come across them. So, and it wasn't on my radar at all. Lee J, can you, uh, do you have any information on that that you could share? Um, yes. Um, I clearly respect and agree that there could be some performance standards that, um, we can establish um, between now and, of course, the next time town meeting would be held that would look at buffers and look at um, a lot of the other things, including distances from residential areas and that sort of thing. I mean, some of it already is required um, to be in certain locations when they're in certain zones. Uh, we can certainly build stuff around that. Um, Short of that, um, as far as performance standards, wherever they're allowed now, when anything comes in front of you folks, we do have the ability to condition that application on certain buffers on, um, we're gonna certainly, if this thing comes forward, um, as I've heard it um, is being proposed as well, because of its location, Traffic and um, traffic movements is certainly a large issue for us to take into consideration out there. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Maine DOT were involved in reviewing that as well. So there are some immediate situations that we can take looks at without having performance standards. However, long-term, it certainly is something to build into the ordinance so that additional performance standards are in place for um, a number, a number of things that have been discussed tonight. I, I guess my immediate concern would be if, obviously we're not gonna get it into this revision of the land use ordinance, but would it be within the board's purview or would it be unduly prohibitive on an applicant if we said we're, we're gonna approve these with the condition that um, we would not approve any new applicants for that industry until such a time we, we were able to do more research. Is that is that a bridge too far or is that within our realm to, to do that? It, it, it's, it's not a bridge too far. However, what it would require is having um, between yourself and the select board um, enter into a moratorium on that type of a use until you can develop performance standards. Moratoriums are only allowed for 180 days and if you can't get something put together in that 180 days, you can get a one-time extension for additional 180 days. Um, but that does require a moratorium. Uh, otherwise, you will be examining every project individually as they come forward. So, Dave, I, I know somebody brought up earlier that there, there's a proposal for a uh, gas station on Route 4. I was not aware of that. Do we have an application coming forth for that? We do not. Would it be appropriate for us to recommend a moratorium, but given the public's concerns, can is that within our purview to do that until the land use ordinance uh, addresses that issue? Lee J. So you, you can't establish that moratorium. Only the select board could, but okay. certainly a communication from you to the select board asking for that is um, within your purview to do. Okay. Can, can we, uh, instead of doing that, uh, perhaps vote on a sense of the planning board to the select board that that we feel that that should uh, be investigated prior to any approvals. You certainly have that ability. Yes. Okay. In that in that case, I would like to make a motion that uh, we. Well, hold on no, a second. We're okay. still. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> I think we need to just get back to yeah. uh, Christy Rabaska. Yeah. Okay, uh, sorry. <laughs> no, Didn't mean fine. to derail you. I know, I know. We, we, I know the conversation turned yeah. right away yeah, to this. Right. We are so due to guys. have we are due to have a uh, a meeting with the selectmen as a joint. Um, we're supposed to have them quarterly, and we have not had one yet. 
for quarter one. So, okay. Um, I know last time we didn't do it because there wasn't that many issues. Right. But, I mean, seeing how this seems like a very strong issue, we should right. probably act on it fairly quickly. Um, yep. I can, I can tell you that the select board is aware of this. Well, they're more aware than we are. We haven't um, had anything on it, so right. this is the first time I've heard it. Okay. <laughs> it's probably the first time other people have heard well, it too. Paul and I so, were at the select yeah, meeting. Too, Sherry and I were there. And yeah. I was asked directly by one of the members if I knew what was going on yeah. because of the stakes, and I told him what I heard. Yeah. And um, I, can I just ask you guys to get refocused on okay. what we're doing? Yeah. Here? So back to the revision of land use <laughs> ordinance. We can save this for informational items. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so based on the the drafts. Um, that we've reviewed previously and the current draft of the revised land use ordinance, I would like to make a motion to accept those as drafted and to forward them on to the selectmen. Like I'll second, second that. Okay. What? Is anybody streaming the meeting? No. No. Okay, so we had a, a motion and a second. Further discussion? All right, roll call, Paul? Yes. Jerry? Yes. I'm a yes. Phil? Yes. yes. Don and Matt? Yes. All right, there we go. Now that is moving to the Board of Selectmen. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Christy. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next. Have a nice evening. Thank you. you well. Thank you, Christy. Bye. The rest of your activities will be in touch soon. Thank you. <laughs> All right, new business, site plan review, map R7, lot 2, and map R8, lot 6-6, -6, Woodland Pond Cluster Subdivision, Altus Engineering. Yes. And just so you know, if you have to walk over to it, can you grab the mic with you? Okay, just want to make sure. So everyone can hear you. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Uh, for the record, I'm Eric Sowery from All Engineering. On behalf of the client, uh, Steve Brown and, and Web Ostra Inc. I also have Isaiah Plant, who's the product surveyor, and Troy Williams. Here for a good one. Um, this project came before you a few months ago on sketch plan review. Uh, at that time, we presented two layouts. Uh, one was a conventional that showed, you know, your standard big lots taking over the entire subdivision, cul-de-sacs all over the place, uh, and a cluster layout. Uh, which is what you see before you hear uh, the feedback at the time with the cluster layout was preferable for obvious reasons, land preservation. Um, also discussed with the fact that these roads are pretty much done. Uh, the roads are in. Uh, I understand that they have essentially followed roads that had been there through the woods on and on and on over the years um, with slight adjustments. Uh, they are two subgrade. Crushed gravels in, but they weren't paved. We told him to stop <laughs> um, for obvious reasons because he's not a pruner. Um, there was also some wetland issues. There were two crossings that were not permitted. Uh, one of them we think was a replacement of an older culvert that was there, uh, which is right in here. And then there was a new driveway put in that was definitely not a prior crossing. Um, we walked the site with the Army Corps, uh, I believe in December it was, uh, and we did file a permit for that about two months ago. Uh, in the meantime, we did get a permit at the DEP after the fact. So that is moving on. Um, so I'll just give you a little more background just to refresh your memories. Uh, it's two parcels, totally 56 acres. Uh, we're in the R3 zone, and we're looking at 11 new house lots uh, and preserving 39 acres of open space, uh, which is about 69% of the entire parcel, where only 30% is required. Um, this parcel is unique where it has a man-made fire pond, which you see down in the bottom there, uh, with a couple islands in there. It's really kind of neat. And there is a, a town uh, easement that goes down to an existing dry hydrant. Uh, that is fire suppression for the surrounding neighborhoods. We've got Alley Pond at the top and Johnny Lane down in here. Um, so obviously with the new road, that'll make things a little bit easier to get, get down there for the fire department. Uh, the existing easement would have to be extinguished. Um, obviously the fire department doesn't need an easement when we're putting in a road. Um, but we would do a new easement around the fire hydrant itself uh, so that the town does have access to that year round. Um, Homeowner Association docs were submitted. I'm sure the town council will review those at some point. Um, and I don't know if you guys have sent us out for third-party review for engineering. I think you guys might need to accept that and then do we that. Have. That's, oh, oh, you have. Okay, great. Um, 
The other issue were turtles brought up by an abutter, Mrs. Moulin, uh, who lives in this parcel here, the white box in the middle, which was carved out uh, before we got involved with the project. Uh, we did reach out to DEP and uh, IFNW. IFNW said there's some turtle habitat towards the back. This is holes in the wrong place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, turtle habitat in here, obviously with the pond, and this is kind of like an emergent swamp type of area. Um, they recommended that in design try to keep everything 250 feet away, uh, which obviously if the roads are in, can't really do much with, with that. But the closest um, thing, portion of the proposed subdivision that comes to it is this lot here, but it's separated by the road, which is there. That road's been in there forever. It extends on. There's a whole network of roads back there. Um, so the closest is actually Mrs. Mullane's lot right there. Um, kind of ironic. Um, the other issue was... Uh, Northern black racers, which is a species of snake. There was a site way over here, and they said the odds are they might be there, they might not. Again, try to leave 250 feet from habitat. Uh, so from a, a biological perspective, we really have no concerns at all with the project as is, um, because everything is sort of pushed away from that, that high-value habitat, uh, which is that big chunk of wetland that you see on the left-hand side of the plant there. Um, let's see, what else? The only thing left at the state level is a PBR for the subdivision itself for stormwater. Uh, so that'll go in after I think we're going to address the, uh, any third-party review comments from the town engineer uh, before we submit that so they, the DEP gets the final product. Um, so that's it in a nutshell. Very simple, very straightforward, um, sort of. <laughs> um, so if you guys have any questions, please shoot. Um, I, so I missed all the, the first presentations because I didn't work for the town when you guys mm -hmm. started. So my question, I saw the information from Inland Fisheries and Wildlife, um, but in regards to the, the turtles, they had originally nested in the road, but they didn't. I didn't see anything that that addressed. Yeah, I, I, they didn't say anything about any nesting or anything. So that's, I mean, it, it was. I, it I was looked odd. at what was in there, and it said to 250 feet, yeah. and that. So they're yeah, that not. They're not a, a requesting that you do anything else or look. They they looked everywhere and Appar they're content. Apparently. Okay. Yeah. All right. I was just concerned with where they originally laid their eggs mm -hmm. versus. Yeah, they, they said Blanny's turtle and Blanny's turtle, a state endangered okay. species, have been documented in the project area, while a white spotted turtle, a state threatened species, has been documented within the vicinity of the pro proposed project. They didn't talk about any nests or any specific locations or anything. Because they were the ones that moved the nests, so <laughs> they would have exactly. they would have definitely been aware. I yeah, just oh was, yeah, yep. That's why I was surprised to not see anything beyond that one statement. Yeah, so I was I was too. I thought they didn't I thought this was going to be further. turtle Armageddon, to be honest with you, but it's, <laughs> it, it wasn't. So. Turtle Geddon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, turtle turtle Geddon. <laughs> so we we got lucky there, I think. And I I don't know if this is an appropriate time, but I, um, Lee J, you can you can stop me if this is a bad time, but you know what I'm going to say, right? Go for it. All right. So, I haven't met you, I'm Irish Griffith, I'm the code officer, and uh, I was made aware that uh, I was actually sent the video of the original meeting that Mr. Brown was doing the roads, and because that is a violation of the subdivision rules 10.2 subsection E, I went out and posted both ends of that road today. Okay. We have not received any core samples, and no other work oh. can be done on that. Yep. And that, so, that's why we told him to stop. And he cannot so. remove those postings. I have to take them down when these guys give the yep. okay. I, so I completely just, understand. It makes perfect sense to me. I, I wish clients would do things, you know, after approvals. It happens to me. They will too often. here with me here. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, happens, so. it happens way too often. Um, but I, we did have some compaction testing done, just so you know. Uh, it's... We need those results. Yeah, I'll, I'll get so. you those. It was 105%, okay. which is just utterly fantastic. Um, there was one a material sample that came in a little light, and I think it was because it was after it rained, so the fines were up. So I think that had something to do with it. He's going to have to go and test the whole thing. Yes. And he, he knows this. I just wanted to make yep. sure you're aware. And then one last question, and then I'll let the board actually do their job. Sorry. So um, you applied for the DEP after the fact. Has that been approved yet? Yep. Okay. Yep. And do we yep. have a copy of that? I didn't know. Uh, if, you, if you don't, I can get it to you. Yeah. Okay. It, it's, it's a PBR, so it's one of those you send it in, and two weeks later, people hear back their proof. Yeah, so, and then they then they send you that stupid little piece of paper that says, "Oh, sorry, we didn't get you in time." Here you go. Uh, honestly, they never send those anymore. No, I haven't seen one in a long time. Oh, we used to get them all the time. They, they've got, else. they don't have anybody working. That's the That's problem. That's true. They, they're so short. They're very short staff. They're very they are short very staff, short exactly. staff. Very short staff. So the little piece of paper. Yeah, they Lucian have. used to send them, but Lucian's gone. Lucian's so, gone. Yeah. Um, 
Okay. Thank you for clarifying so, that. Yeah, but I'll, I'll get you the, the DEP application. Perfect. That'd be that. great. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and Irish, um, when they came up first for the preliminary, that's when we heard about the, they were moving on the road and we told them to stop. Yeah. Point, and they were so. very honest about yeah. it from what I saw in the meeting, yep. that, that YouTube video was sent to me, um, yep. and I was like, hmm. Okay, well, at least, it, at least it called yourself out, so that, that was good. It, well, it wasn't me, I'm not calling it, myself out. No, well, <laughs> called out your client, and that, that was, so I just went and did my job, which was yep. to make sure that nobody else acts any naughtier than they have yeah. to be. Yep. So. And there are there are new standards for the roads, mm -hmm. too. Just yeah, so, I know. Okay. Yeah, in terms of width, I think we've got it. Okay. So that, that's not going to be an issue at all. Okay. Um, we just got to figure out what his materials were. As I said, I think compaction's good. I wanted to do more. I think he only did one spot. Uh, I sent out SW poll. This was back in November, something like that. November, December-ish. Uh, so we'll get more sampling as we go. Uh, okay. This is intended to be private, but I know it does have to meet town standards. Mm -hmm. so. Lee J, do you have anything else to add? Uh, I do. All right. Um, so any of the core sampling um, ought to be sent and shared with Underwood Engineering, who's doing the third-party review on the town's behalf. Um, I'd also suggest, I mean, I, Irish did the right thing, said all the right things tonight about that. Um, I'd take it a little further and suggest that um, the applicant should be aware that just because Attar, his engineer, says things are good doesn't mean Underwood is going to agree. And Underwood could come back and require a different road design or require changes because of stormwater. Um, which means that whatever has been done to date may have to get redone again. So, I mean, I think that needs to be out there um, because just because it was done, it was done without, without proper approvals, and that doesn't mean it's fait accompli. Um, so I want to put that back out there. The other thing that I think is important is that IFNW did raise the issue of the blanding turtles um, and did suggest a 250-foot buffer. Um, but I think when it comes time for approval at preliminary level, we will be recommending for you folks to condition them on having that information field verified. And that would include the black, black gracers as well. Um, I can tell you, we just worked on a project in another community and it was contingent on receiving a letter from IFNW. Um, it had been over a year that the applicant was waiting for something. And as soon as the project got approved, I, IFNW came in and said that the project needed a 250 foot buffer around an area where blending turtles were, and it pretty much shut the project down. So I think that, um, you know, just because um, it said 250 foot buffer, if we haven't field verified where those, where those little turtles are living and moving around, um, we can put 250 foot buffer anywhere on the site and say, oh, we're good. Um, we ought to have a, a wetland biologist go out and our biologist go out and field verify that for the board. Yeah, I think I'll bring IFNW themselves. Okay. Yeah. They, they've got a, a turtle guy who's, wow, he knows turtles. <laughs> so. Other than that, um, I'm just sitting in tonight. This is Hannah's project, um, yeah. and she's outlined everything for you in her in her small memo. Mm -hmm. um, if, while I have the floor, I might as well just, you know, and then I can shut up. Um, I think that um, from a submission standpoint, you could find the application complete tonight. Um, the request for additional information, like the IFNW field verifications and that sort of thing, that's above and beyond completeness. So um, you're you're good to go to set yourself a site walk and if you choose to do that. Okay. Um, with that being said, I, I would make a motion that we find um, the application complete. I'll second that. Okay, further discussion? Roll call vote, Paul? Yes. Jerry? Yes. I'm a yes. Phil? Yes, yes. Dan, Dawn and Matt? Yes. All right. Okay, so now, Let's do. We want to do a site walk, correct? Yes. You you need yes. to do a site yes. walk. Yeah. Um, you need so, to do a site walk and a public, and hearing, a public hearing the same day. So, so the next meeting scheduled for March second. Okay. Um. It gets dark at like five fifteen. So should we try and get there for like four? 
Does that work with you guys? Four four thirty. I'm trying. Okay. Make give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to suggest four thirty. Okay. But and Don, does that work? And what time are we doing it? Four four thirty. Four thirty sounds 30. better. Four thirty because I, I know that you guys work. So. Yeah, I got to drive from Laconia. So. Okay. Right. So four thirty on March second. I gotta say, Lee J, first time I've ever been accused of not getting into something far enough. Usually I kind of feel like I over. <laughs> I did fine. Thank you. <laughs> All right. And I'll wait. Thank you. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. So just, just to verify, site walk on the second, followed by planning board at six thirty. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. See you there. All right. Thank you. Could you leave that map up, please, for public comment? I just want to. can't. We can't discuss this in public comment because it pertains to the agenda stuff. Uh, the public comments for non. St agenda stuff. You'll have a public hearing in the site walk. You can discuss your issues then. No, you have not had an opportunity yet to speak. Uh, March March second at four at four thirty. You can come to the site walk. If you have concerns, you can you can talk with me at the site walk, or in the public hearing, you can state your comments on. Yeah. It's okay. It is. It's so confusing. It's confusing. They get it the is. public comment in the public hearing. Right. Right. Okay. So next, uh, we have to sign these for. This is the Route Four, correct? The plans. That is for correct. Yeah. And this is just old. We just haven't signed them. This is the one that. Uh, I have to show you the Berwicks. No, that's, oh, that's, no, for, no. that's for Pine Hill Road. Yeah, Pine Hill Pine Road, Road, sorry. Pine Hill Road. <laughs> <laughs> we talked when we talked earlier. It was, it was, uh, yeah. Too many things happening yep. all at once. All right. <laughs> so it's already been approved. We just have to sign it and date it. Okay, so what have we got left? Public comment. More than one page. Public comment and information. Uh, it's just one on each one. So we're okay. there's three of them right there. <laughs> it's a confusing process, yes. but thank you. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank yes. you guys. Yep. Sure, okay. And you guys, right. feel free to give me a call nice. if you have any questions. Yes, we'll okay. See you later. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Did Lee J leave? Or did Lee J just shut up this video? No, Lee J still there. Lee J, I just wanted to let you know that when I was uh, so rudely playing on my phone during the gas station conversation, I was trying to save you and Christy a little time. I checked all three municipalities I used to work for, and none of them have a gas station ordinance, and that would be uh, Wells, Old Orchard, and Saco. So, so when they you're don't looking, have performance you can skip standards those. for those? No. Nope. Okay. Well, that's probably a reason why we don't, then. That probably is, but that's, uh, I'm just trying to save Lee J and Christy a little. Oops. Sorry, Dave. Also relocating Dave and I up to you apparently. <laughs> <laughs> but figured I'd save you a few minutes anyways. Thank you. Time is money and we get the bill, so <laughs> <laughs> all right. So moving on. Um the second public comment, I'll open that up. Um uh, it's for any non agenda related issues. 
Phil, would this be a, a time for your motion? Yeah, I, I would like your motion. I would like to make a motion that we uh, set up an appointment with the selectmen to discuss the, the possibility of, of either a delay or a moratorium um, until we have time to adequately address the issues related to uh, gas station projects and benzene, etc. That that was all new information to me, and as a board, I don't feel like we're really doing our due diligence if we don't explore that further. I'd like to second that motion. Okay, for the uh, discussion. Matt, Matt, do you have anything? No, no, I, I was uh, you disagreeing. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I guess roll call vote. Uh, Paul, yes. Jerry. Yes. I'm a yes. Phil. Yes. Don. Absolutely. And Matt. Yes. Okay. So, motion approved. And now we just have to schedule a time with the selectmen for a meeting. Okay. Thank you, Phil, for doing that. Yes, no, doing our doing our best. <laughs> so, this is going to be we're we're entering the season. We got to get. I got a I got a, a list of all the dates that we have to hit before we the town votes in June. The selectmen are pretty much going to take everything from March. And that's when the planning board, why well, I have to go in front of the planning board with Mike or with Phil and go present uh, our plan, what we did. Also, plan the land use ordinance amendment that the town's going to be voting on. This is going to be putting things in a crunch. And I don't foresee this getting approved. This gas station amendment i don't foresee it back in my civilian days when i was on the planning board i used to be all full of um gumption and i wanted to get stuff done and then i soon realized after becoming a chairman that there's a process that we really have to undertake and it goes with the the town vote it, it really does. And the town will vote on town ordinances in June. In November, you don't vote on town ordinances because of the money situation, the way that the town gets paid for, they get money from the state. We would have to print up our own type of uh, ballots okay yeah so this is related to non um election cycles correct so like if this was a presidency election or something like that it would already automatically be on the ballot and hence we could add something at that point correct that would be, no that no. would be different okay when you when the town is voting on something the town is responsible for paying to have those ballots printed up okay in my 23 years of living in Berwick, I believe that there was only one time that the town voted in November on something, okay? June is when the town spends their money on voting, okay? I'm not saying that it can't be done. However, I don't know anything about this gas station. I don't. I know well, we don't know either. And we I know should. there's rumors about it. <laughs> but you're talking but, about yeah. now. But I, I think if we, I, I hear what you're saying, Dave, but I, if we put that in the hard to do locker and we don't we don't pursue it at all, then we're not doing our due diligence right. as a board. Well, that's so why I, we should I, have the discussion with the board of selectmen, select see what they say, get the feelings from that, and go from there. I mean, well, worst case ask, scenario, we have we to wait. I mean, best case scenario, if there is an issue, that we'll try and get it. If it can be in uh, November. Forgive my ignorance, but doesn't the, the so the townspeople have to vote on the moratorium too? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So Selectman goes. I see what Dave is saying yeah. is it may not be something that we can even. Is this something where? Them. And I know we've done it in the past. I mean, I, it sounds like everybody on this board has their mind made up about how they feel about it. Can we embrace technology, and via email roll call vote with the selectmen if they're in agreement? Let's vote on it and get it on the ballot. We, I don't see why we can't embrace technology. You have to have yeah. a public hearing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lee J. Yeah. And you have Lee to advertise. You to add yeah, Lee J. You, have to, you have to advertise the twelve. Th there are procedures for this. Yeah. Lee J. Is, is trying yeah. to chime in, so let's. Yep.
So, yeah, I wanted to, I, I quickly went to grab my land use law book. Um, I believe the, I believe the moratorium does not go to public vote. I it's believe the moratorium selection. stops with the select board okay. action. I know the, the last moratorium we had was for marijuana and it lasted for the first time. And then after that, things were already adopted. Right. And I was for that because four years ago, it was just thrown in our face. I didn't understand. I thought we would have tons of people coming down here and wanting to rent spaces and, and sell marijuana. That's what I thought. And we, I think we took a, a six month break. And we figured things out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So why would we not do that in this case where there are in potential broader reaching environmental implications and, and health I, implications? I think the problem is just the timing of it. It's, mm -hmm. it's always a concern when something comes up or is, it, is discussed, but really what needs to happen is we need to be thinking about this stuff before something comes up for it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like if we want to work on something solar right now, we need to do it now before someone else tries to put something through. Right. We can't be trying to change things just because people don't want it there. If it's already right. allowed there, there's certain things we can change, but other than that, it's it is what it is. You are, you are. I can I can help you fairly quick, short order on that. Um, I had developed a performance standard code for another town on solar, so I've got something that's somewhat generic, if you will, but hits a lot of the issues and um, something I can get for you fairly quick. I do That's have great. another yeah. question, though, and I don't want to get off the subject. I'm, I'm looking up the moratorium is issue while I speak. But um, have you folks talked at all about LD 2003 and the whole housing issue? I've talked about it a lot with a couple of meetings with code enforcement, but I don't believe that planning has addressed it at all. Nope. Um, okay. And I... I was going to bring that up, but you kind of beat me to it because oh, I, I had a whole, well, I had a whole other question about the gas station thing first. So while you're looking up the moratorium and we're still on that one, I'm going to kind of back step a little bit. So let's say um, the moratorium thing doesn't happen, whether it's because the select board doesn't have time to meet or they don't feel the same. Now, outside of I happen to have a little bit more awareness from sharing an office with Dave and listening to some of the conversations and phone calls he's gotten um, of exactly what these people's concerns, or not concerns, but what their reach is trying to be, um, with the exception of them wanting to do the rezoning in the 500-foot uh, thing. Now, a lot of the things such as buffering and traffic and such, can't all of that kind of be addressed if we get an application by the planning board? Yes. Like the bulk of those concerns, yep. they should yep. be able to write in as condition of approval, correct? Yep. yep. Buffering. Absolutely. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what I was kind of getting to earlier. I mean, short of having performance standards in place that are very specific, the board does have conditions of approval um, legality so that if there's something that you can straight face um, requiring them to do certain things, then you can condition them on having to do that. Mm -hmm. So the only thing that they can't, that the board can't um, actually do from what I've heard of people wanting in regards to the gas station is actually restrict the location. That's the only thing that the board can't do, correct? Correct. At this time, that would be correct. That would take okay. a change to the zoning. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Correct. And that's okay. not going to happen. You. And I got a question on this. Certainly. Where they propose to put this, if you look at the map, for land use and all that, South Berwick's aquifer is right underneath that. So well, that South would be Berwick. something that would be addressed so, with the application itself. Yeah. But. And, and I want to just caution the board a little bit about yeah, yeah, talking too kind of much idea. detail yeah. here um, because it can get it yeah. can get you let's, in trouble. Let's not talk specifics about exactly. it, but, yeah. but yeah. location yeah. issues would be something that would be looked at with an application, but not something that the planning right. board could specifically restrict at the so time. So if I'm hearing you correctly, okay. the, the meeting with the select board, even if we're in agreement, it, that's a non-starter. Is that 
Oh, well, it's a discussion. Um, it's it's a basically discussion. a discussion. Okay. If they it's don't feel that it's a vote worthy it's a, it's thing, it's a discussion, or if it is. and I can reach out. I can I can work with the town clerk on scheduling. We should have. We should we should be meeting with them every yeah. three months. Yeah. Um, and and I put could, on the agenda. I could. Well, no, we would have a, we would have have a separate them. meeting. Yeah, meeting. we would have a separate yeah. meeting. It'd be only um, off Tuesday with them down yeah. here. Yep. And we can bring that up. Mm -hmm. You can you can pitch it to them. Yeah. It's then, always worth talking. To another them. thing is also adding to that meeting. We haven't had a discussion about the annual uh, marijuana licenses. Every year we're supposed to have a discussion on if we're going to raise the cap, if the cap is staying. It's, if Irish wants to add something to it in regards to inspections. Okay. So. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Lee J. <laughs> I, see you, I see you laughing and nodding. So. Um, so there's a, it's, it's always worth having a conversation. I just wanted to ask that question because I wanted to make sure that you guys were, that I was correct for starters, that I wasn't thinking wrong, but that you guys were aware that even if there's moratorium doesn't go through, that there is, like, it's not going to be just willy-nilly. Yeah. We don't right. do willy-nilly around here. Um, so LD2003, have you guys heard about it at all? What's it called? LD2003. That's the legislative number, but it's yeah. kind of stuck with the law. Yeah. That has that's to deal with the housing crisis. It is an right? affordable is that... housing thing that is requiring um, the 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 dumbed down for code officers version of this bill is that it is an effort to um, to increase affordable housing, and what it requires is that every everywhere in the state mm -hmm. of Maine allows up to four units to be developed in any area that is deemed a growth area that is designated growth areas. So basically pretty much the entire state mm -hmm. has to allow this. Um, but this is what we're waiting for. And Lee J, as of uh, yesterday afternoon, they still had not released any guidance from MMA that I'm aware of uh, besides a preliminary they released a, like a preliminary guidance document, but not their final guidance. But uh, um, no, actually, that's out Irish, and I can send that. It to is you. out, yes. please, because um, we nobody had it yesterday at the meeting, and uh, so we we've been waiting kind of to get that get our get our grubby little we'll, we'll paws. It is out. Um, I can tell you, it's not very different from um, from the previous document that you're mentioning. Um. Yeah. They are going to be having a public hearing, and I believe it's also via Zoom on March 1st um, for the rulemaking law. And it would be shortly after rulemaking law public hearing if they don't have any changes that, that finalizes um, how this thing is going to work. Um, uh, I've, I've got a lot of different things about it, but um, Sam. <laughs> it's, it's basically it's basically ready to go. Um, I do have and, a question for you on that because you are are you aware that there's another LD being proposed to uh, eliminate this LD 2003 from municipalities of 10,000 and under? I don't know if I that's going to get. Yes, there's there's a bunch of a bunch of bills out there. Um, I did hear about that one. Um, I also heard um, that there may be extensions of one year or even two years being proposed that would require not a, this bill. So, so you folks understand the law oh, basically requires that this be in place by July 1 of this year in every town. Um, that's not going to happen. It's just not. Um, no one was prepared for it. I'm still getting calls from towns asking you know, what's going on? Is that something you can help me with? Um, and there's supposed to be grant monies coming out that we would, be, we being SMPDC would be eligible to apply for to help towns. That hasn't gone through rulemaking yet. Uh, no, the, um, the preliminary application, the preliminary draft of the application is out, but the actual application is not out, but you have to have correct. it submitted but they haven't actually given it to you. Yeah, they've kind it of is. hamstringed you, haven't they? They have, um, very much so. We've been spending a lot of our own money, um, if you will, working with towns already. Um, actually, um, I've drafted a couple of 
ordinances that are ready to go for towns, but it is going to take uh, multiple changes to um, your ordinances because you have sewer and water, because you have multifamily development allowance. Um, you're going to, you may have to change your ADU requirements. There's, there's a number of ordinance changes that um, are going to have to be considered um, above and beyond. The stuff Christy has provided you is really around stormwater and erosion control, which is what she does. Um, the rest of this stuff is stuff that we're probably going to need to do with you mm -hmm. um, and get ready to go. But um, we hadn't really heard much um, from a number of towns, so um, we really haven't pushed the issue, but it's it's going to take some time to amend those sections of your ordinances. Two things on that. First, um, I would like to be involved in that process with you and Dave. Absolutely. Sure that's okay. Um, Absolutely. Because it's my myself that gets to deal with the follow <laughs> that short term. You guys do too as well because mm -hmm. of a trigger subdivision for mm -hmm. these situations. Um, second, uh, because we are in Mubeck Town, uh, we've adopted it voluntarily despite being under the 10,000. If, and this is just for my curiosity's sake, if we should happen to see that LD that's proposed, I think it, is it Thompson, Thompson, that's whoever's putting that one up for the uh, exempting the under 10,000. Yeah. Because we're under. I mean, we hold. Is it out of Holton? Mm -hmm. I thought it was out of Thomaston or something, but um, yeah. wherever it came out of, if, if that goes through, would we be able to exempt under that or would we not because we voluntarily adopted Mubeck? I don't think it's tied to Mubeck. I think it's just strictly tied to population. So, um, so we could potentially be exempted from that? Yes. Oh, please God. Your lips to God's ears, <laughs> my friend. Your lips to God's ears. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry. So, yeah, no. So, um, um, and Irish is, was, was starting to talk about, um, there are three component parts to this law. One is, is that if you allow multifamily housing, and you have either a growth a growth area, uh, have public water and public sewer, which is a whole other issue. And I, I won't get into that tonight with you, um, but there's a big hole that's in the law. Um, or if you're part of a, part of a um, uh, larger HUD designated area, then you have to allow multifamily developments that are proposing to be um, affordable housing developments at a rate of two and a half times the additional density of what your base zone allows. So let's say your base zone allows 10 units an acre, then you're going to have to allow what, 25 units an acre. Um, so um, you need to be aware of that. Um, there's the two, what we call the two to four unit requirement. So in your community, because you also have sewer and water, you've got all those component parts again, um, you're looking at having to allow up to four units on a piece of, on a, on a vacant piece of land. Um, it still would require a subdivision like any other over three units would require. And um, you still, um, you can up the density. So if it's a two acre zone, for each, for the first unit, you could require an additional two acres for each unit after that, but you can't require more than the whatever the base zone requirement is per unit. Um, but you have to allow up to four units on that parcel of land. And then there's the, <clears throat> excuse me, then there's the accessory dwelling unit component. Um, so the accessory dwelling units uh, have to be allowed anywhere that um, residential development is is allowed um, or exists. So anybody anywhere can that has a home could have an ADU. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, the ADU. Uh, you cannot require additional parking um, where most units require one and a half to two parking spaces per unit. You can't require any additional parking. Um, you can't change your setbacks or density allowances. So whatever they have, if they can meet your setback requirements, they can have a detached ADU or one that's attached to the house. It doesn't have to be inside the house, but <clears throat> there is the option of inside attached or detached. Um, it gets fairly complicated. 
And so um, we're going to have to tackle your ordinances and um, look at all three of these component parts and amend them accordingly to meet the state law. Now, the other piece of that is the way the state law is written, it says the town shall do these things. It doesn't say the town may do these things. So um, you're hamstrung, you're required to do mm -hmm. these things. Um, the good news is there's no stick at the end of the law. The only stick is, is if you don't have this in place um, and a developer comes along and wants to do something, uh, they could sue the town, but the state is not going to be coming to the town and knocking on your door and saying, uh, we're sorry, but you know, you've got X, Y, and Z. Um, so you do have to do it, but, and there's not a lot of choice with it, so. I have a question for you, Lee J, based on the conversations yesterday, and I do have my notes from yesterday because I came half prepared. Um, now, so the, the LD, the bill says that, uh, Matt, you can not require more than three parking spaces for every two units under the affordable housing, but it was suggested that a lot of um, municipalities, as they're making the adaptation to this to try and make things kind of reasonable, are adding to their land use ordinance wording of uh, must add up to 0.5 spaces after four bedrooms. Is that something that, um, or is that circumventation of the law? Just to ensure. I suggest, that parking. Yeah, I would suggest that's circumventing the law. Um, I'm not sure that that, I would suggest that that could be challengeable. I, ha I had the feeling, but I also wanted to throw everything out there that yeah, we actually. Sure. Um, yeah, no, I, 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 I wouldn't advise that because um, the law is very specific. Um, yeah. I thought it was too. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Um, a couple of things that I think the board should be aware of that the LD is specific to dwelling units. So office spaces and business spaces, they can't say, oh, I'm going to make this a four unit and three of them are going to be rentals and one's going to be an office space. They, this is strictly, it specifies dwelling units. Mm -hmm. so, so we're talking not, just housing. Not mixed use. Not mixed use. Yeah. This is specifically dwelling units. As, as it applies to ADUs, mother-in-laws, uh, as what we call them. Used to uh, be, yes. <laughs> but yeah, uh, an ADU and let's say an attached ADU, uh, you know, I'm in the mortgage business. We do these all the time. We still appraise it as a one unit dwelling with an ADU. So you still get that, that one unit appraisal. The, uh, and consequently you get, uh, less of a tax hit. Uh, but one of, one of the things that I'm wondering, I have never run into a multiple unit dwelling with ADUs. So that that that's kind of like a contradiction of terms, I would think. Is well, that correct? Am I correct here, or is there something here that crosses that line? I I need to go back in and, and look at the language um, specifically. I can't recall it off the top of my head, but I don't believe that if you've got two or three unit apartment building that you can't um, add an ADU um, as a straight face test as part of this law. Yeah, it's, um, I think it comes down to, there was some kicking around about that the other day too, and actually at the last couple of meetings I've been to for various things, this has been brought That's up. That's pretty scary. And they, well, it, it kind of comes down to verbiage because your traditional in-law apartment is something that is supposed to, you know, typically is carved out of your home for your mother-in-law, but let's right. be real, nobody wants to live with their in-laws. So now we have accessory dwelling units, which are more often attached even if they're attached in a way as to make it appear as a single family still separate but entrance is, and that sort of thing yeah. yes but this is so an accessory dwelling unit is just an additional dwelling on the property is for we can limit the size here. we can, yes, limit, we the can size. limit the size mm -hmm. but it's basically an accessory dwelling unit on the parcel for the intents of this law um, and I would advise, I looked, and we don't have a maximum on our ordinance, and that's something I think we should do. Um, Absolutely. And about square footage? Yeah, square footage for a We have a minimum, um, I think, of 400 square feet. We have a minimum of 400, but most municipalities I've worked in have a maximum of yeah. 700 square feet. I thought yeah. with accessory dwelling units, they could only be up to 50% of 50 the... Well, 
of the this, the structures uh, square footage. Um, that might be in your local ordinance, and yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and you can right. right. It you is. can still do that, but you want to. I think you want to have a an, a an emphatic number. Yeah. So yeah, so specific, now what we're we saying is tiny home number. village is a possibility in Berwick. Like what? So. Tiny so don't village. don't mix the don't two. Don't mix those two. Don, don't you bring the th words out right now. Well, we should be discussing those two because we don't have anything on a, any standards. But or any, yes, that should be a discussion, like, as but as not as part of the ADU. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One thing at a time, Mike. I can only handle but so. But Lee J, yeah, if I'm not fifty percent of total living space yeah. of the area. Yeah. Is if, what if, if I'm not mistaken, the LD two thousand three allows for multiple ADUs so long as you have pro appropriate setbacks. Is that a correct? Uh, that, a correct that was how. The the law originally was written, but with yeah, um, rulemaking coming out, it talks about one ADU per house. Okay. Okay. So that verbiage is being eliminated. Yeah. yeah. Or changed. Yes. Yeah. Changed. Yeah. yeah. So another thing for you, Lee J, that I wanted to bring up here with, with the gentleman of the planning board is yeah. it was discussed yesterday that um, because, of course, uh, if it if they're going to trigger a lot of these will trigger subdivision because it'll be under the subdivision regulations an, an additional dwelling unit so you'll be seeing a lot of these come before you um, there's a, a suggestion that we add a note in the subdivision review because particularly for me it's less about these things and more about when they're seeing things like what we just saw with um, Alley Pond a lot of your subdivisions they do your um, all your hydraulic soils, all your hydric soils, all your testing, everything is done based on what's proposed. So when you start adding additional dwelling units, then you're looking at none of these tests are necessarily that you guys approved this project on are right. So there's a note, there's a suggestion that the notes going forward say accessory dwelling units are not allowed without additional subdivision review, or this is a subdivision of single family homes. Can they put a restriction in there? Is that something that we should maybe start doing as far as at least requiring additional review if they're going to put ADUs in, a, in an approved subdivision just on the basis that the subdivisions are Maybe approved. based on zoning? That, well. So I don't think we can do that. Um, no. The only way that could be exempted is if there are covenants that the developer puts on or an HOA associated with the development that doesn't allow second units um, there. Otherwise, I believe we have to allow them by right. Well, that's a bit of an issue for me. And the reason that I asked about it is because um, the unfortunate reality that I've had to explain to quite a few people recently is that um, an HOA doc might be required by the board to ensure that certain things that they want covered long term, like you know, tree growth, et cetera, maintenance, um, they might be required, but under code, that's not something that I enforce. That's a civil matter. Correct. That's so, correct. Yeah. So even if they say, you know, well, it's I've got to be in the uh, homeowner stocks yeah. and somebody applies for it, I still it. have to approve yep. it. And I have had to. Yep. And then and they have to do a civil there. court. Yep. But that still concerns me in regards to most particular. Well, I no, where... I, I I would I would kind of deviate a little bit with you on that, Irish. Um, we don't inf the we being you know municipal officials, if you will, we don't enforce HOA rules. However, it's really incumbent upon you know for us to at least say to the homeowner, you need to read your HOA regulations and see if you can even do what you want to do. Um, but Yes, uh, but if they I say they think, have and they want to do it, I have to approve it if it's uh, if it's allowable. And I, I would say I would. I live in an HOA. Um, I'm the vice president <laughs> of my HOA. Um, oh no! <laughs> I, I would say I would say that um, in order for us to to legally issue a permit on something like that, you'd want to see um, a letter from the HOA board of directors approving them to be able to do that. Yeah, see, I it's not required by code though, and I dealt with this a lot in Wells. I had doesn't, to, it doesn't I, matter. Um, it's like asking that's like asking someone for um, if you lease a piece of land and you want to go to before the planning board, you need to have a letter of approval from whoever the landowner is to be able to come before the board. Well, that's a little different because that's right title and interest. Um, I, and I only I only speak to this because 
when I worked in Wells, I had ADUs and home occupations that were yep. permitted in HOA areas that their HOA docs prevented it. But I was, you know, we had to do it because I, if we were if we were challenged, we could be taken to court for it because we didn't have the right to deny the permit based on the HOA because that's civil. Um, I, I would say that we would defer to Phil on this. But okay, so I'll, I feel I'll pretty have... confident that if the HOA docs don't allow it, then we don't have a right to permit it. Correct. That is correct. I live in an HOA. Um, yeah, but you're not a code enforcement officer, and it's a, it's the code world is different. Yeah. So I will have. And it's dependent on each HOA. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, and, and if they're not updated, and then someone changes their mind, and it's if it's not a vote, and they haven't voted it. Well, in Wells, we dealt with it quite a few times, and uh, Leah Rachin always said, nope, you did what you were supposed to, you permitted it. And yeah. so it literally had to go to civil court. But I'll have I'll have James check with That's Bill, fine. because I, I'm just, this is where I get confused, is that the board can require things, but whether or not it's enforceable by me, I need to make sure that I'm doing legally what is required of me, but also legal for the citizens. Um, and I think... Let me just see if I had anything else that I wanted to bring up. Um, something else that I do want you guys to be aware of, and I'm sure Lee J is well aware of this too. With this LD, um, if there's an existing structure that is non-conforming, so say you've got a, a house with a barn and the barn is within the setbacks, if they choose to install these ADUs in this barn that's within the setbacks, I don't have the right to say no. I can't allow them to make it more non-conforming, but they do right. have the right yeah. to utilize a non-conforming property to do this. Mm -hmm. And I want to throw yes. that out to you just That's in case you, right. in case somebody yeah. comes in front of you it's with that. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I agree with you now. Oh, and we get to utilize the shoreland, zool, zool, shoreland zone rules on the ADU, so that does not right. exempt shoreland zone. So that will right. that will be a, an Irish yeah. mess to deal with, but at least <laughs> it's a little, you know. We're not going to be plopping them right up on every water source we have. I have, have. a quick question, Lee J. Could we condition um, that we have HOA letters of approval for the for any of those situations? Oh, um, I don't think we couldn't condition that. Um, I'd want to dig a little deeper. I'm I'm dealing with with several attorneys for several towns on yep. on this stuff right now, so I can find out if if it's certainly something that we can put into the law that into the ordinance that says that um if if you're located in hoa then we need to would have we need to request a letter of approval yeah from the hoa as okay, part of the permitting so to, process to play on the wording that was used earlier and shot down by you could may maybe add into the land use ordinance that accessory dwelling units are not allowed in areas with hoas without hoa approval sure and in fact the law says that I want a copy of that law because that'll get me out of out of hawk with a whole lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I will get I will get that, that for you. I will get that's that. That's all the fancy notes I have. So, so can I go? I got to go back a second because I didn't want to leave this issue. Um, it is open ended, and I think again, Phil is someone you're going to need to reach out to. Um, but on the moratorium issue, it's very interesting because it says extension by selectmen. And then it says, in municipalities where the municipal legislative body is the town meeting, the selectmen may extend the moratorium in compliance with subsection two after notice and hearing. But it doesn't talk about the process for establishing an initial moratorium. Yeah. Um, and it only talks about the extension of a moratorium. So uh, if, if the select board is interested in pursuing that at some point, I would definitely be reaching out to, to Phil Saucier for um, his assistance on that. Would you gentlemen like me to, I already Can have. make that an action item? Because I, I think it's important. I already have James uh, looking out, reaching out to Phil for something else for me. And now I'm going to add the HOA doc thing. And um, so I can add the moratorium to great. my request for him, my request email that I'm going to have. Yeah, that'd be great. Lee J, this is Jerry. I got a question for you. Yes, sir. What are you hearing about the new energy code? <laughs> um, I'm you not hearing. I'm not hearing a I... lot other than if it's been adopted, um, then that's really in Irish's hands to require um, certification. 
um, of the code when okay. there's a new building permit yes. for so residential Irish, homes. Irish is spending too much time talking to you guys, but they are getting ready to adopt the 2021. And yes, I'm requiring blower door tests. Yes, they require mechanical tests. Because it's affecting a lot of the work in Portland and everything else. Didn't and we, didn't we just adopt the, what was it, 2016? 15, it, 2015. 2015. Yeah. And I'm going to say something that I hope you guys don't find um, out of line. And I apologize in advance if you do. But I, I found it very um, surprising to discover how many of the contractors here locally were not aware of the energy codes. Um, I may or may not be playing with fire. Uh, please don't ever show this. Don't send this to Paul Demers, okay? Um, in the interest of fairness to our residents, what I have done because I, I'm not a big fan of the uh, code office's ability, you know, authority having jurisdiction thing, but I am a big, big proponent of fairness because our contractors were not made aware locally of the 2015 energy code by my predecessors. Um, I am still accepting uh, air door, blower door test results of seven for anything that was permitted by Joe or Jen because they were not given the education they needed. They, they were not required to submit a path of compliance. Anybody that has submitted a permit application since I started that requires to meet the energy code, you know, under the description of what is required under the energy code for substantial um, rehab or what have you, they have given me a pathway of compliance and they're being held to that three. Right. So we are working on that and they are getting ready to adopt the 2021. I think it, they're also requiring new Make, homes to be pre-wired for solar. That I have not heard, but we don't mm -hmm. do electrical here, so that might be part of it. Yeah, but they're also requiring there, uh, future and, vents and the insulation and the radon, the radon, uh, right. Right. the radon piping has to be in place along with a space for the radon motor. Yeah. That's all stuff that I've been educating people about and I'm working currently on getting, uh, I'm gonna order the 2021 to see what the differences are before I finalize what I'm working on for the energy code pamphlets and I'm gonna do an energy code video. Um, I'm gonna see about possibly getting one of the people that does some testing here to discuss the duct testing and mechanical, you know. They have a, a pamphlet that comes out that shows you the differences. I don't know, if you can get that. Yeah, but I there's, um, Sometimes it's easier to just simplify it. It is. I'm a code officer. A lot of us are, you know, just mm -hmm. hammer swinging dummies. So I'm trying to <laughs> make sure that I put something that's yeah. so simple that anybody well, can pick it up and understand. Well, it, per it pretty much says this is what it was, this is what it is. But there are five pathways to compliance. Uh -huh. And I don't know if that brochure covers all five. I don't know either. So I, I but I'm very interested. So if you see it, let me. I got it on my desk in my oh. office. Well, can you, can, you, every day. can you slide it over to my desk? Because if it covers all yeah. five pathways of compliance, then I would I love mean, to just this, utilize that. This to new energy myself. code has gone so far that the town of Portland has not approved UNE to build their new medical building. They're holding up their building permit. We're on the fifth month <laughs> now. And what they did require, like they proposed like 10, uh, we call it charging EV, stations. EV. EV. They said no, every 300 parking spaces will have the ability to have a charging station put in. Oh, yeah, like we it have is, the it is killing you right now. Yeah, it's that, that's the big <laughs> issue with the 2021 is going to be the electric tra vehicle yeah, charging and station. And my son in law is building houses up there, so he's falling under this blower door, the solar, all this other requirements for insulation. I don't want to get on my soapbox. Yeah, let's hold off on that one for a while. Yeah, I don't want to get on my soapbox. Let's hold off on that one as long as we can. Uh, but I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm, I get, all no. I'll say about the energy code is I get paid to enforce the codes. I don't get paid to embrace them. Yeah. So, um, I had that information for you. I don't think I had a whole lot else from the energy codes. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I had any other notes that applied to Energy Code or the LD2003 for you. James, now that you're here, <laughs> if, if you, do you, do you know the procedures for the um, moratorium for the town? Could you discuss that if you could? It's essentially it would be an ordinance that would need to be approved by the voters, typically. Okay. Well, 
Lee J, we were yeah. going to have you get a whole film. Guest appearance, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, Lee J. Why are you? Good. He was telling us about extending the moratorium, but they, he said they, he couldn't find anything about just setting it. Is that something that the selectmen would recommend and then we vote on it? Moratorium for what? For This would be for uh, gas station performance standards. Amendments to the land use ordinance. Yeah. Yeah, I, so um, with the critical dates, everything's due to basically next week. Yeah. So so we, we voted and approved the land use ordinance as it was presented, but during the public comment, the, the townspeople brought up some, some concerns related to uh, gas stations. It's too late to get it in there, so we, had, we did approve the land use ordinance as drafted, but what we're asking is, based on the information that was provided by the townspeople, is it within our realm to request from the, the town <laughs> selectmen to establish a moratorium on such businesses until it can be voted on and until we have more information at whether or not it's... I mean, we would need that, the actual moratorium and the reason, all the whereas is and the reasons done by, basically they're, they're technically due today. Mm -hmm. But the question, I think the question that begs itself, James, in town for the establishment of a moratorium, does that have to go to the voters or does it stop with the select board? My understanding, like what we did with, um, when we were proposing um, or kicking around the idea of a marijuana mm -hmm. moratorium, it would have to go to the voters. Okay. That's my understanding, but I'd be happy to do some research into that. So if we just had a meeting to discuss it with the selectmen, that's basically all it would be is just a discussion unless they vote that it does go to vote. And then it would be at the next available time that voting would be approved. Right. Would happen. Yeah, you're pretty... So we'd have to days. schedule like an a, a emergency meeting to discuss this with them within the next week. Right. And, and then, then go from there. And then could try we, to... Could we make a... Is it within our purview to make a motion? Because we, we are all in agreement. So embrace technology, once again, if, if the Board of Selectmen are in agreement that they feel the same way we do, and they vote on it, and they say, yeah, but a moratorium is something we would like to pursue with regard to this industry until we have more information, would a virtual vote on that suffice for that to get on the ballot? I, I know we're short, we're, we're, we're right at the finish line for time, I get like it. A, but like a Zoom vote? Yeah, it, let's embrace technology. I mean, we, we all have email. I don't all. think Zoom would necessarily be the. You need to have action. a public hearing. Yeah. There's a net. There's a. Um, and that's two weeks minimum, right? Twelve mm. days. Yeah. Twelve days. Um, I mean, more Sorry, hands are tied. Uh, I can I can look into it and. Yeah. Um, I think we need to at least just have a discussion about it. I'm not like. There's just, a. Just the discussion should be said, and then we should be able to hash it off with there. I mean, There's a budget meeting Tuesday. I'm not sure that's going to be open up to other business. But there might be, I, I think there probably will be like a public comment or maybe an additional spot for another agenda item. Okay. That's That would be the earl earliest. Mm -hmm. If not, then just it'd be for the uh, two weeks. Mm -hmm. And maybe that would just give enough time to put the ducks in a row to. If the planning board wants to speak with the selectmen, at their regular meeting, you, need, you just let me know, okay. and I'll talk to to Patty, the town yeah. clerk, and I'll get. Yeah. Well, we need to have our quarterly meeting anyway. Well, so no, I, I, I know that, but yeah. we don't have a date for a quarterly. Meeting. No, we never do, and so, we're we're running behind. Honestly, okay. I think we've missed probably three of them I, since I I've that. been on but the board. If, if you if you really are hard pressed to get this done, I will talk to Patty. And I will get you guys on the agenda. I feel like it's a priority, yeah. and, it, and it should happen. I'd like to see it happen. I'll give extra. So, at the, I mean, are you going to request me to pursue the following? Well, yeah, we already made a motion and voted on it that yeah. we we wanted right. further uh, action taken. So no, but the the last meeting of the month in February, the last public meeting that they have in February. That's what you want to. That's what I, you I mean, if, if, if we kick the, if we kick if the can sooner. any further down the road, then we're not. It's not going to happen. So I, you know, once again, let's not put it in the hard to do locker just because it's hard. If, if right. I got to come in an extra evening, 
right. to meet with them and, and plead the case for this issue. I'm willing to do it. So I just let's get on their agenda if we can. Get on the agenda for okay. So not as next as Tuesday, as but the Tuesday after. As soon as possible, I think is what they're aiming. For. Yeah, I, I think having a special meeting would be better. I mean, if we if if no if they're not in agreement with it, then yes, we should be going on their agenda. But if not, it, this should be a discussion um, with our special joint meeting. And then possibly have James there too. All right, I'll I'll work it out with James. We'll we'll work it out. Okay. So you want a special meeting? Yep. If the if the selectmen are not going to go for a special meeting, you're going to go to the final meeting, meeting yep. in February. Okay, yep. that yep. works. Because we could also add the marijuana cap to that special meeting, um, and we could probably come up with a couple other things that we could add to that special meeting too. Okay. The marijuana cap. Yep, every year it's in a, it's in the policies that every year we discuss about um, changing the cap, keeping it where it is, or eliminating it. Um, the amount of licensing. Um, every year we should be having this discussion with the selectmen on how everything's going and if it should change or if it should stay. That's it's there. Yeah. I remember because I helped put it in there. <laughs> that, that's fine. No, I just wanted. To, I I, I know think we've had the discussion with them maybe once about. I know it. that yeah. I know what you're saying, but yeah. I just wanted you to just say it for yep. the viewers at home. Yep. Okay. Excellent. Nice. Um, anything else for informational items? No. We beat that to that. Yeah, one. Step yep. I think that was the longest informational <laughs> item <laughs> we've had in a while. It was good. It was good though. Yeah, yeah. we got a lot of information out. Yeah. It's good. We need that. You guys better close that section real quick because I'm still looking through notes. <laughs> All right, well, on that note, uh, from the esteemed Burgess meeting room, the depths of the Berwick Town Hall, uh, I would like to make a motion to adjourn this planning board meeting. I'll second that motion. Okay. Uh, do I have to do a roll call vote for this one too? No? All right. All in favor? All right. Night. All right. Thank you. Good night. Thankfully, Dave.